Welcome back. This is still 101 on Plus TV Africa. To discuss more on the way forward for the entertainment industry as a whole, now and of course post COVID 19, is a renowned Nigerian creative industries entrepreneur with many years of experience, Mr. Obi Asika. Hello, Mr. Asika. Hello, Elsie. Nice to be with you this morning, or this yeah. afternoon, I should say. Thank you. Now, clearly, a large chunk of um, projected earnings for those in the entertainment industry has been cut off due to the pandemic. As someone who we know to oversee um, different areas in the industry, what is this pandemic saying to the players in the sector? Well, I think it's a very difficult time in terms of future projections. You know, we're in a country where most of the people that work in this sector are what you would call freelance employees. They work from project to project, and that's how they move. So obviously, um, there's going to be a downturn in work. Then the health safety environment of the work environment is going to change because of the public health guidelines that are going to happen post-COVID-19. And it is also very likely that for the foreseeable future, we're not going to see public events at the scale we are used to seeing them. And the engine of the public events is also in this industry. So it's a very worrying time worldwide for anybody who is a self-employed entrepreneur, who, who is somebody who is a vendor, people from makeup artists, um, MCs, performing bands, music bands, not necessarily just superstars. And then, of course, when you go further up the ecosystem, wedding, concert, the cinema, everybody's going to have to. Because even when we come back, social distancing is going to be in place until there's some sort of global vaccine. Until So the world is not really going to go back to normal for maybe a year and a half, two years. It really depends how quickly um, medicine and uh, public health comes to the table and helps humanity get back to normal pre-COVID, but, but um, it's going to be a while. So the, the really important thing now is the ability to pivot, to reinvent, to be creative, and to stay hopeful. Okay, so there's an entertainment COVID-19 advisory committee set up by the FG um, to get information about people in the industry regarding yes. what they need um, to function. Now, if you were on that team, what would you be saying to Lai Mohammed and the federal government? Well, the first thing is first is I'm happy that the committee is in place. Um, it's chaired by Ali Baba, who is a very good friend of mine and one of the most um, thoughtful people who has been working in this sector, discussing these issues for years. Um, I, I like the fact that it's broad-based. It's not just Nollywood or just music or just theatre. It has people from a pretty wide range of the ecosystem. And I also like the way that they're adopting an open collaborative approach where they are sending out questionnaires to players in the sector from small startups to the bigger companies, from industry players to regulators, guilds and societies so that everybody can bring their position to the table. The real work of that committee will be to set different submissions and to try to come up with a comprehensive industry position. Mm. So the industry goes beyond celebrities, like you rightly said, and um, those constantly in the news. There are people within the value chain. Of course. Yeah, people would like to call the engine of the industry. How can um, this committee and the government exactly. ensure that their needs are met as well? Sadly, that's also an example of the fact that domestic television in Nigeria needs to be fixed because the domestic television is not growing. They don't have budgets, therefore they're not commissioning. Therefore, they cannot even do interventions because they themselves are looking for interventions. You know, those who are fans of, of, the, of the sector are attracted to it by the big names. You know, the ones you see on TV, the ones in front of the camera and the cinema, the ones who are singing the biggest songs, the biggest comedians. And that's the star power and the celebrity power, and it's important. But for every time you see a music video, there's probably 150 people that worked on that music video. Every time you see a film, it's the same thing. It's not the people on the screen. So we need a situation where maybe we can use this opportunity to also begin to document all those people because there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them, and we need to be able to document them. It's better for them also in terms of getting palliative 
say, sanctions because they need to be visible in the economy. So that is something that the guilds should be thinking about, the associations, because data is going to be the critical thing going forward. And with your data, then you can get, you know, if you're not on the grid, it's impossible to say somebody come and help me if they can't find you. So data is going to be key to build the data of our talent, our freelancers, the fixed term employees, the people who are at the front line, and they cut across 30 to 40 different service providers who are all working in what we call the CCI, the cultural and creative industries of Nigeria or soft power. So the first thing is the short term to bridge those people and enable them to survive the downturn in activities. The second thing is the medium term to look at the pivots. We need to build domestic platforms that can scale in Nigeria. The biggest opportunity for the creative industries in Nigeria is in Nigeria. The place where, where we are probably monetizing the least is Nigeria. So we need to see some strategic actions supported by this committee that looks at um, a nexus, let's say a nexus between the entrepreneurs in the creative industries and the entrepreneurs in the technology industries. If those two people can marry finance, I'm confident that Nigeria can roll out a number of platforms to support live performance, to support music streaming, SVOD, and, you know, more of these things because our people need that. And we also need to fix domestic television as well. We're looking at post-COVID as well. Now, how do you, how do you advise they position themselves so much so that they are so relevant that governments begin to sit down to um, look at what kind of grants or what kind of single-digit loan they require to um, get the job done? We, we in Nigeria, we all know that we as Nigerians are consuming our content massively every day on every type of platform and every type of device. And we know that our music followed by our music first, then our Nollywood, the comedy sketches, the fashion, the attitude, the food, all of these things are globalizing at an enormous rate. And we are seeing enormous streams worldwide. So I think already you will see, even in the last uh, month, those who are massive already online are just going to get bigger, yeah? And they will keep engaging. And in a time like this, where people become anxious, become mentally depressed, also become um, concerned. The role of entertainment is enormous to de-stress, to, to allow you to relax, to drive other emotions, to give hope and inspiration. Um, I think the creative industry of Nigeria has the best story to tell about Nigeria. And we need positive stories. We need national stories. We need things that bring us together. And you know, even in a time like this, when people are separated, right? The things that you see uh, that people need are the things that will give them a sense of community and a sense of feeling. Some of the some of the artists and some of the celebrities, all of them are busy engaging. I think everybody's learning as they go along. If you notice, um, everybody's trying to be Oprah, but that's not just in Nigeria. That's worldwide. Everybody's becoming a, a you know an influencer, an opinion leader, a speaker, and people are beginning to share more knowledge. And maybe that is. The most important thing is to understand how to engage, to stay engaged, to be interactive, um, and to protect your brand in that way by speaking with and for the people at all times. Okay. I love what Don Jazzy is doing with his brand, for example. I, you know, he's somebody that was, on a personal level, he used to be quite shy. But if you didn't know that, you would never believe that when you check his social media. You've always talked about untapped opportunities in Nigeria. Oh. Um, but looking at where we are now and the yep. pandemic, do you see even more opportunities or less opportunities? Well, I think the untapped opportunities remain. I think, I think it's about our ability to connect the dots, right? We don't need to go anywhere to know that. What we need is to build trust and build communication between different strata of society so that traders, manufacturers, entrepreneurs have a common platform where they can have trust. If we have trust, we can build this country and build our market. Our market is enormous. Even starting as a base, every creative in Africa is trying to get to Nigeria. You understand? That is the truth of the matter. 
everybody's trying to make it in Nigeria from Kenya, Ghana, South Africa. They want to make it in Nigeria. So we that are in Nigeria, don't take it for granted. Let's not be complacent. I think that we need new platforms. You know, we need our own DSPs, like our own Spotify, our own Netflixes. We need 100 new television stations. We need more venues for live entertainment because live will return and venues take time to build and convert. So we should be confident and the government can support that by putting funds into those interventions. We need to be able to protect our IP and rights in Nigeria and sell merchandise and products to consumers so that everybody can be happy. You know, there's nothing more painful than creating stuff and you never receive anything for it. And there's nothing more painful than knowing that at a time in your country, you were number one, right? And we've all gone through this thing. And we were having a meeting just two days ago, and the conversation has not really changed in 20 years. So it is important that the next generation, the younger guys, we need to be disruptive at a time when Nigeria has really come to a situation where there is no more oil cash, there's no more of that. So the things that some of us have been saying for 20 years, maybe it is time to listen to understand that the biggest asset in Nigeria is the human talent. And the biggest expression of that human talent comes through creativity and innovation. Nowhere in the world do creatives build the distribution and retail. Those things are done by big corporations who handle those things. And, they, and therefore, they enable talent to exploit and earn based on that infrastructure. And sometimes in Nigeria, when they say the creative industries is not structured, I think what they mean is Nigeria is not structured. Because Nigeria lacks infrastructure, lacks power, lacks retail, supply chain, distribution. So if you, are, if you are in a whole bunch of different industries, it is very, very hard for you to monetize your own product in this market. The brand is a brand. The trademark is a trademark. Who knows whether Nico Mbaga, Sweet Mother, streams a billion times a year, every year, on Mother's Day. Or if it would and could, if we had our own plan. Platforms. Okay. These Thank are the sort you. of things that we need to think about. Mm. If we had, if we had a Nigerian platform with ten million users, the numbers would be bigger than any numbers on the continent. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Asika. It's been an interesting chat um, with the founder of Mavens Record, Don Jazzy, and um, a Nigerian creative industry entrepreneur, Ubi Asika. To catch up on this episode and all exclusive content, do visit our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa, and also remember to subscribe. My name is Elsie Godwin. Thank you for watching.